What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? You know, now I remember I had asked in the uh, community tab, who is all the sisters out there that speaking for the brothers? Who are they? I want to know. And I, I specifically said sisters. I know you mentioned a couple of other people. Eh, I'm not going to get involved with that. Not today. So we got our sister here, Chantel Simone. Now, the first time I seen Chantel's videos actually was on TikTok. I didn't see it on YouTube. Um, I did a review of that. She made a comment. I said, oh, okay, cool. And I went to check out her channel. Uh, she's doing a lot of great things. So I definitely want to introduce you know, her to y'all today. So Chantel, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to this conversation. All right, Chantel. So, you know, just just a little bit about you. You know, what, what got you on social media saying, you know what? I'm just seeing the landscape, you know, with these, you know, modern American women. I'm not liking it. I got to speak up, even though I know I'm going to be trash for it. What, what inspired you to do that? Well, um, I was just observing how dating has been one sided for so long and how um, how much. We were misled. And when I say we, I mean young ladies, young girls. I grew up in Jamaica, so it's not just American women. Um, many of us were misled into thinking what men want from a relationship. And then I started observing what men actually want from a relationship. And you, I noticed that there's a huge disconnect. So I just started my channel to share what I've been observing and to have conversation with like-minded people. Okay, so since you started that channel and 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 what you know, when did you start really picking up some 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 traction? When did that happen? Um, probably last year I went on um TLA, the lead attorneys yes. show. And then since then I started like picking up traction. Before then, though, it was just like you know, slow and steady, casual conversation with my loyal subscribers. Okay. All right. Awesome. And shout out to the lead attorney. You know, we had him on uh, before as well. Uh, he doing a lot of great work. So, so, you know, you've covered this. I've pointed this thing out. Why is it today that you have a lot of the, you know, women who say they want to be married, mm -hmm. but they're not in the position, you know, to be married whatsoever. Like what, what brings that delusion? I think, honestly, I think it's the lies that we were told. You know, many of us were, we grew up on Disney. We, you know, we were told, oh, if we just be us, just be regular, a man is going to come in, a prince is going to come in and save the day and we don't have to do anything. We don't have to reciprocate. And dating has been so one-sided for so long because of those narratives. And then if we talk about the 90s R&B music, you know, Jodeci and, and Boys to Men and Babyface talking about, oh, I'll cook for you as soon as I come home from work. Like many of us were brainwashed into thinking that dating is just so one-sided as women, we are the table. So we don't have to do anything. And men are starting to speak up and say, you know, they, they are no longer going to accept mediocre women. So and then, of course, you know, with the rise of Kevin Samuels, all of that just went over the edge. So I, I think that's why we see so many women frustrated because men are starting to to speak up. Well, just from my observation, you know, you know, brother Kevin, you know, and definitely, you know, um, he rests in definitely peace. Um, when you first seen Kevin Samuels come on the scene, because I remember Kevin when he was just talking to men, you know, I interviewed him, I think back in 2017 or so. Um, and I ended up putting it on this channel just as a flashback at the time. And, and, you know, but Kevin switched over to talking, you know, about the issues with these women. You know, what was your initial response to uh, brother Kevin when you saw it? Well, I, I first saw Kevin through another um, another YouTube channel that I supported back in the day. So it was kind of like a soft blow because I had loyalty to that channel already. So it wasn't like an initial like, you know, I, I stumbled up Kevin, like I trusted those content creators. So if they were interviewing him, then I trust that, you know, what he's saying has substance. So it wasn't it wasn't like a harsh blow <laughs> um, as many women um, took it. But what he was saying was pretty was pretty accurate. I mean, I respect I've always have respected people's perspective and people's opinion. And if he's talking from a man's perspective and I'm not a man, then I didn't have any reason to really push back on what he was saying. All I could do was just listen. So on your content, you know, itself, you speak about a lot of issues. You know, I remember you was talking about the soft girl era, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and could you explain, you know, your position on soft girl era? Because you was kind of explaining that a lot of these women are finessing now with soft girl era. But could you it, it go a little bit into that? 
so in my personal opinion, you know, with the rise of Kevin Samuels and a lot of men being more vocal about their preferences, I think a lot of women are just putting on, you know, like the chameleons, they're just putting on what men want. And men of men have been saying, you know, they want soft, they want feminine, they want friendly. So with the soft girl era, it's just women saying, oh, I'll, I can just pretend to be soft. I can pretend to be feminine, but without actually doing the real work of, you know, getting to therapy, figuring out why they were so hard for so long and I'm actually digging into what caused them to have to now be soft and and one thing I noticed a lot of them want to be soft after they've hit the wall and have a couple kids um so it's like they're not really doing the hard the true work that that's required to attract a, a man that many of them desire mm, hitting the wall mm, glad you brought that up so what, give us a definition in your opinion, just as a woman, when, the, when you see another woman, like, ooh, she didn't hit the wall. You know, as men, we have our own definition, but what's your definition? So my definition goes down to bio, um, you know, your bio clock. <laughs> um, once you hit 35, high-risk pregnancy start. Um, you know, once you hit 30, you approaching 35. So I, I base hitting the wall um, based on that, just how many eggs you got left. I know a lot of people base hitting the wall on how you look. But you can still look 25. If you're 40 and you look 25, your eggs are still 40. So um, I try to use a very practical um, definition with hitting the wall. And that's just how many eggs you got left. Okay. So basically what you're saying is, is that there's two walls you hit. The biological wall that no matter how you look, you're going to hit that. Like you said, high-risk pregnancy, children come out. Um, mm -hmm. you know, down syndrome, you know, et cetera, bed, you would be bed risk and all that, you know, 35 mm -hmm. plus. Right. So mm -hmm. the biological wall. So you say, yeah. but the physical wall could be possibly extended if, if, if only she, let's say she's drinking a lot of water, eating her fruits and vegetables, working out, et cetera. Is that what you're saying basically? Yeah. But I don't really focus on the physical wall. I think that's men preferences. You okay. know, if, um, if a woman hits the physical wall or not, that depends on the man that she's dating um so i only focus on the on the the eggs and the um you know high-risk pregnancy wall yeah because i mean if you look at research shows that women should have their children in their 20s that's mm -hmm. their like prime yeah yeah but you know we were told to to enjoy our 20s don't settle on too soon get to find yourself because you know you're lost for whatever reason in your 20s and it's, it's all a setup because if you think about it logically, if you're enjoying your 20s and high-risk pregnancy starts at 30, then you technically only have five years to, to find somebody, get serious, get married, and then push out all your kids. Like, it makes no logical sense. But, you know, many of us, myself included, just blindly follow certain narrative, certain talking points without questioning it. Um, you know, we were just told this is what we should believe, and we don't know why we believe what we believe. We just believe it. All right, so you said that you were born, you were raped, born in Jamaica, and mm -hmm. what's the difference with Jamaican culture versus, let's say, um, was taught in you know traditional, let's say, Black American culture? Like I said, I'm Black American, you're Jamaican. So what's taught to the women that's a little different, or is it some of it the same? So most of it is the same. The only the biggest difference is because we don't have like government assistance. Mm -hmm. um, we can't say, oh, I don't need my man. You know, the government is going to help me. There's no such thing as food. St well, there is, but, you know, it's not as popular food stamps or WIC or, you know, anything like that. So we kind of need our men to help us with raising the kids. Um, that's the only major difference I've observed in American culture. You know, they can always just keep the man out and then file for um, child support or file for, you know, government aid. Okay, so basically what you're saying in Jamaica, at least, and which is not just Jamaica, but many countries throughout the world, they don't have no welfare and food stamps for you to get. Mm -mm. You you have to little bit get more on a man's program when the re when these, you know, government outs uh, isn't mm -hmm. there. Yeah, but it's not necessarily get on his program. It's just not saying that we don't need them. Um, Jamaican women are very combative. You know, we're very argumentative. We lean more in the masculine side, even though we're more traditional in terms of we still wash, cook and clean and serve the man the biggest piece of meat. Um, but we're still very argumentative, very loud and just um, combative. And where do you think that comes from? Um, good question. I don't know. But, you know, that's a common <laughs> that's a common stereotype that we're just um, we're argumentative, we, we're loud. Are you argumentative and loud? 
Um, no, no. Majority of us are. I personally am not, just because okay. I'm not like you know, just a combative type. I would much rather um, back away from the argument than face right. it. But um, we we are. It, there is a stereotype that we are known to be just loud and we we fight and you know. Right. Right. So, so what you're saying is, is that Caribbean, at least in Jamaica, I'm not going to say all Caribbean women. So you're saying that basically Caribbean Jamaican women is, has some of the same issues you would say a black America would have, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Jamaica, I mean, I think they call it that here too, hot headed, where it's like, are you familiar with that term? Yes, I'm very familiar with that term. Yeah, it's like we're very hot headed. Um, so it it will be like similar issues like that. As I said, the only the biggest difference is the dependency on government assistance. That's that's what we don't have. So we tend to have our men in the house, or you know, um, but we have all the 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 paternity fraud, uh, as like uh, like you know, a <laughs> high over there, and um, we have all the the issues. Um, there's a saying that says whenever America sneezes, Jamaica catch the flu or something like that. Right. It's like, you know, we're getting the feminist movement is, you know, being starting to get strong over there. You see women who are getting their education, put in marriage mm. and family on a back burner. Um, yeah, it, it, it's happening over there, too. And how Jamaican men are dealing with that? Um, I, I really don't know. I think I think they just adapt to mm. it you know it's like kind of like here or when the feminist movement started you know and black women started like you know be, being so independent the men just like adapted and you know thought that women want to hear that you're going to cook for them as soon as they get home from work or you know because of those r&b songs so it's just like okay yeah we're just falling, yeah so. some of that simp music and it's not really yeah. i mean how, how, how do you expect a man to go work 12 hours sometimes 14 16 hours and then cook for you and as I said, it's like we have these we have these mindset, we have these desires and we really don't question if how realistic our desires are. We just know that we're supposed to have these desires. Now, now, one more question I have to ask about these because it popped in my head. Do you think women who are masculine, you say, oh, this female masculine and she attempts to be a soft girl. Do you think she can be reformed into a soft girl or a masculine female is what she'll be for the rest of her life? Mm, I think it depends on age. And then it also the thing depends on um what what causes her to want to be a soft girl. I think a lot of times, and we observe with people who are close to forty, um they tend to want to be soft now because they want a man. I don't think that's a genuine reason to be soft. So it depends on how far along she was masculine for, and it depends on her true reason reasoning to want to be soft. But I do think it's possible. I mean, um, I would be, you know, a hypocrite if I was to think that people can't change. That's the reason religion exists, right? So we all can be redeemed and we all can change. So I wouldn't say like it's impossible for her to become a soft girl, but um, her reasoning depends a lot on that. Yeah, because I saw I saw a graph actually about the different stages of women, and when they get to the epiphany stage, actually the epiphany stage for women, they were saying start around twenty eight. But mm. definitely when they get into their early 30s, they really have that epiphany. And if you notice, women in their early 30s really start saying, oh, man, I really need a, a good guy now. Now, they, they had good guy opportunities in their 20s, right? And they were told mm -hmm. hot girl mm -hmm. summer's okay. They was told, you know, being a city girl is okay. But now you want a good guy now, right? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned 40. I want to glad you brought up 40. At the age of 40, women have made plenty of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So they are hella cooperative. Well, ones that got common sense, let me say they're hella cooperative at 40 because they know, shoot, I don't, I, I'm looking at 60 in 20 years. And I don't have nobody. Mm -hmm. That's why if you look at uh, TikTok, you seeing all the confessionals that's happening right now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, these women are just really losing, losing it about being alone. And I don't know if you saw the recent one saying, I'm overweight. I'm, you know, a, a single mother. Uh, you know, she used to dance and all of that. And she said, I'm by myself with a kid. And what did I waste my life on? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate. Um, 
Um, I am not phased by the tears. I'm not really phased by, you know, them bawling on social media now once they've hit the wall because it's kind of selfish if you were to really um, remove your emotions from it and think of it. I mean, you had your fun. You had your hot girl summer. You collected a couple babies, you know, and then now it's like, oh, my gosh, I made my mistake in my past. Let me cry on social media and hope for a guy to have sympathy for me. It's like, uh. You know, it's, we don't give that much grace to, to men. Why are we giving that much? You know, a man can say, oh, I was a bum all my life. You know, I had nine yeah. baby mamas, didn't take care of my kids. Now I'm 40. Let me cry on social media and have these people. It's like, yes, yeah, it's save your tears. Um, what I'm more concerned about is the young girls. And that's why I respect any content creators who made their mistake. Um, and, and humble enough, swallow their pride enough to tell the young girls to not repeat their mistake. Too often we see these content creators bawling to be saved. But I, as I said earlier, you know, depending on their age and depending on, on, um, you know, their agenda, I, don't, I, I, I just don't buy it. Yes, Chantel, you a savage. I love it. I, I love I it. Don't cry to me. You had all that time to get it right. Don't cry now when you're 35 and 40 on this, I mean, on, on this internet. I love on the it. bright side, on the bright side, crying burn calories. So hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, right there you go. Okay, well, you brought that up. Okay, now you brought it up. It, it looked like you, you stay in the gym. You know, I've seen your Instagram <laughs> and all that. So, what what is the pushback on that? Like, because you know, when some guys, especially when Kevin Samuels would bring up, um, you know, things about weight. I mean, he, they would just lose it. You know, mm -hmm. about the weight situation. What is? Your, have you ever had any pushback by telling women to to watch their weight? Oh yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in my personal, personal, well, you know, my other than YouTube, outside of YouTube, I'm a personal trainer. So I've been having pushback since even before YouTube when it comes to weight loss and stuff. But like, I think it's, I, again, it's our programming. It's what we were told, like a man is supposed to just accept us no matter the weight we are. Um, people, society should just accept us. I mean, look at Lizzo. All Lizzo got to do is just cry and eat ice cream in a bathtub and then everybody jumped to her side, you know, with sympathy. But at the end of the day, it's like, um, <sighs> let's be honest, a 300-pound woman is not okay with herself. You know, she's not looking in the mirror and saying, damn, we know she's crying at night. So it's like, if you are not happy with your weight, not only because of how you look, but because of your health issues, why on earth would you expect somebody else outside of you to um to accept you at that if you're not accepting yourself at that weight? I mean, we all know an overweight person that's dieting for like they've been dieting for like over ten years. Yeah, and even as men, you know, like I said, sure, I had to get on myself beginning of the year. I said, shoot, man, you drop some weight. I dropped by what 35, 40 pounds, you know, or whatever. I said, because I was just eating, eating and not working out, you know, with the pandemic. Yeah. I, just, I, I stopped doing everything right. So I said, let me get back in this gym. Let me pick up these vegetables. And, you know, and, yeah, and, and yeah. men, we, we accept when we, you know, I say, okay, man, I got weight, man. I need to do whatever. You don't see a dude walking around here with his shirt off, you know, when he ain't in shape. Most men say I'm not gonna do that to the world, but you got some of these women who don't have the shape of certain clothes, and I'm like, why are you wearing that? Mm -hmm. And you have no shame. And unfortunately for me, which I don't understand, why is it, Chantel, that it's accepted in our community for women who don't have the the you know the body type to wear certain clothes to be walking around? You mentioned Lizzo; she's a poster child of that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is that acceptable? And if you say anything. Then you're wrong. Like, okay, but okay, fine. You don't want to hear from a man, fine. But you're a woman, you're a personal mm -hmm. trainer as well. Why mm -hmm. is it they don't even want to hear from you? And you know how to get people in shape. I mean, honestly, I think it comes back to the same reason why these women think that they can hit 40 and then start crying on the internet and people don't have sympathy for them. You know, I think I think we just feel as though <sighs> I don't know. I just think we feel as though we're just so special, you know, sugar and spice and everything nice. And if we show up any kind of way, if we made any kind of mistake, we can be the worst of the worst and still expect men to come and wipe us up. We can literally have six babies with seven baby daddies and still expect to be wiped up by a high value man. We live in this delusion. And it's like, if you fat, you fat. Like, why sugarcoat it? You know, why walk on eggshell around it? I've, I've been hearing that how I'm just so horrible and I'm bashing, you know, fat people. But it's like, sis, fat is fat. Like, gone are the days when I, I remember I watch, I watch Friends, right? And if you're familiar with Friends, 
um one of the yes, characters monica <laughs> remember monica was fat back in the days but the fact that monica was fat she was probably like 180 to 200 pounds no in 2022 like that's not considered fat anymore says is like we keep we continue to like push the limits and it's like nobody's talking about the consequences nobody's talking about the health risks and i think that that ties into um a woman spending her prime years on the streets having a kid or two and not wanting to deal with the consequences as women we just ignore the consequences thinking that because god is a redeemer then everybody else is just going to forget about or or decisions yeah, that's that's interesting because, like I say, with the heart disease issue in the black community, you know that with the uh, diabetes type type two, definitely diabetes that we deal with. A lot of it just relates cancers. A lot mm -hmm. of it's related directly to you know what we're choosing to eat, and so if they don't want to listen to you, and that's something that you know what you're talking about, right? That's I mean, what you train with multiple clients a week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been training since 2017. Okay. All right. So you're an expert. And if they want to listen, if they don't want to listen to an expert outside anybody else, I mean, do, do you offer that like even virtually to, to uh, subscribers or something like that, that they could train with you? Yeah, I have a fitness channel. Okay. All right. So you got a whole fitness channel. There you go. Mm -hmm. So she don't just talk about what happens in the dating world. She also try to get you in shape. So th they got this, this video that I want you to, I'm going to queue up real quick, Chantel. So give me a second. Okay. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and go look at this. So I'm going to make this really brief. I went to Texas Roll House because I had a taste for their cinnamon butter rolls and, you know, whatever. That's neither here nor there. But listen, hear me out. I go sit at the bar because I'm solo dolo. I know this is gentleman. We started talking. We had a we sparked up a conversation. He comes and he sits next to me. Um, <laughs> you know, we order our food. We eat, he, his food comes. He's like, you know, what? I'm going to wait for you to eat or whatever. He's just, you mean like the perfect gentleman. We talk about everything, life, love, relationships, food, careers. You know, he's single. He doesn't have any children. He, you know, has a great job. You know, we're vibing. We're on the same page about a whole lot of things. And this is, it's crazy. Um, long story short, we end up being at Texas Roll House for three hours straight talking and vibing so then when it's you know we're about to leave he's like you know what i don't want the night to end can i walk you to your car you know i want to talk to you in a more you know a more quiet atmosphere i'm like okay sure he walks into my car um we end up walking around a little bit outside so we end up walking around outside and i'm like dang i need to get gas so i go to the gas station right next door to texas row house um and he goes with me he pumps my gas or whatever um we come back to the restaurant and we're sitting and we're talking for a long period of time like crazy just vibing and then he's like well you know, it's getting late. You know, I have to get up early for work tomorrow, but it was very nice meeting you. Y'all tell me why we didn't exchange any contact information whatsoever. I am shocked, perplexed, dumbfounded, speechless, all those words. I am, because look, why extend conversation after the bar if we're not going to seal the deal and, you know, keep in contact with each other? I had such an amazing... Let me stop that. Chantel, <laughs> what's up with that? Because I've been hearing a, quite a few videos that these dudes are like, I'm cool. I'll talk with you. Have a great time. When it comes to taking the step further, uh, I'm good. I mean, she, she, uh, okay. So she, she asked a very, very, very important question. Why extend conversation after the restaurant if we're not going to exchange number? The purpose of extending the conversation is to see if he was going to ask for your number. Clearly, in that extended conversation, she probably said something. He picked up on a vibe, something that made him say, okay, you know what? I'm not even going to waste my time and ask for her number. We're, we're not compatible. And, you know, it just is what it is. I think, like, as women, we think every man should want us. And evaluate yourself. I know what you said in those four hours while you were pumping gas or whatever. That would have probably been a turnoff for him instead of putting the blame on him. Well, let me let me finish a little bit and then, then I'll, I'll get my take on it. How about that? Amazing time talking to him. I didn't think like, yo, let me get your number. I mean, I don't know. I thought eventually it would come, but I don't know. I'm just shocked. Like, why talk for that long? Why vibe so much for us not to keep in contact? Okay. So let me ask you a question, Chantel. If she, do you have a problem with women? 
re like saying, you know what, if this guy is not about to say something, I will. Do you have a problem with that? Um, no, I, I do believe that women should shoot their shot. However, I think her situation was just clear as day. I mean, if if he wanted her, he would ask for her number and vice versa. Um, so the fact that he didn't ask for her number, it shouldn't be rocket science. He just didn't want her, in my opinion. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, well, you know, because this as a man, if I'm like, let's say you're talking to a woman, and he's like, hey, you know, you want to extend the conversation. Obviously, something in that conversation was interesting enough for you to want to extend it, right? Uh -huh. Now, like you said, maybe she says something, so, oh, 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 you know, but usually, like I say, every person is different. Some people are nice and just continue conversation and back out the situation. Somebody like me, I hear something, I'm just going to shut it down and just be out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm just a little different on that. But I just the way I looked at it, if this guy was this interesting to you to extend the conversation, help you pump gas, why couldn't she say, well, he said, well, I got to go work tomorrow. I say, hey, you know, I want to continue this convers you know, conversation. I mean, <laughs> hey, we can go out or something. You know, maybe one day I say, hey, can I get you my number? Like, because I, I think in that situation, if he had, if he was interested, when he he already extended the conversation for over four hours, why not just ask for her number? I mean, some guys can tell though. Some guys are actually don't know how to seal the deal. Um, because well. we have you have to understand, we have a group of guys today, Chantel, that was raised with single mothers, and your father teaches you how to close the deal on women. Mm -hmm. you can have a great conversation. You can vibe with women, but with the problem with a lot of these guys is some of them are socially awkward. You're dealing with a lot of that today too. Socially awkward guys. They like the woman, but they don't know how to seal the deal or they're afraid of rejection, even though they, they're talking. Cause you know how it is. Sometimes Chantel in our community, women can be kind of uh, not nice when they reject. Uh -huh. So a lot of guys today, and maybe you could talk about this. A lot of guys today is like, you know what? I don't even want to say nothing to them. And it goes back to the passport bro conversation. Uh -huh. The reason why the passport bro thing is so, I guess, pretty polarizing is that these women aren't rejecting them in the manner that we get rejected here in the United States. Um. Okay. Okay. So I'm all for women shooting their shots, right? I, I have shot my shots, sliding them, everything. But I also think that it's a man's responsibility to seal the deal. So depending on how their conversation was, if she was friendly, if she wasn't like, you know, boisterous or um, because she said he pumped the gas, what if she was demanding, right? What if she mm -hmm. was like, oh, you better, you know, there, there are other things to the story that we don't know. But going based off what we know, what she said if it was all great and he was just too, for lack of a better word, scared to seal the deal, then she probably dodged the bullet because who wants a man who, you know, you're going to have to be holding his hand to seal the deal. Um, I want to say it's called sh choosing signal. So if you give choosing signal and the guy is too scared to, to, to shoot his shot or seal the deal, then just, just move along. And I understand where you come from. That sounds about right because you come up in a different culture, but the culture that you see with a lot of these guys today, and I'm not giving excuse. I'm old school. I believe in a whole lot of things these guys fight with me about. Right. Uh -huh. I believe I don't believe in a 50 50 relationship. Never experienced it. Never had it. Cause I'm like, am I half a man? No, I'm the whole man. And a woman only gonna respect you unless you walk in that role as a provider. Right. And I'm like, uh -huh. you, you can seal the deal. But if the guy seemed like a good dude, he helped you pump your gas. He did all of that. And if he didn't say anything, then I'm like, well, shoot, shoot your shot. Uh, worst case scenario, he's going to say no. Or maybe he, he got a girl. I don't know what the case may be with this guy, but I'm just saying I'm seeing too many socially awkward guys today. So, but I feel like, okay, so my thing is she's given him, she's, she gave him four hours of her time, right? Four hours conversation that according to her was great. Right. If mm -hmm. he can't seal the deal after getting all that choosing signal, then that's not a guy that's ready for a relationship. If he's socially awkward, he probably needs to go speak with a therapist or get some coaching or something before he enters the dating, the dating market. And I do agree with you. There are a lot of men who were raised by single moms saying so, you know, they're waiting for all oh, the strong, independent women to come and seal the deal. But yeah. it's like, uh, I'm not I personally, if. If depending on what the situation was and we talked for four hours and, you know, I'm giving you all that choosing signal and you did not answer my number, I'm just, it, I'm okay. Net. Like, you know, it's not going to be 
because if I was to say, hey, you should answer my number, then it's I'll be pursuing you. You know, I'll be chasing you when I'm not saying that the man is supposed to chase the woman, but, you know, the man is supposed to be the masculine one. Right. To be the hunter. Like if I am telling you, convincing you to take my number, then it's like I took over the hunting role and that just wasn't not going to work out for me. So. Right. So so basically you kind of saying something I just about thought about. It seems like when it comes to a lot of sisters, at least they don't really think they should have to be kind of pursuing or aggressive with men a little bit. Not when I mean aggressive. I mean, like, I really want this guy. Let me say something to him. You know what I'm saying? Not in a, in a masculine way, though, because a woman can approach a man and shoot her shot in a way she's extremely feminine with. It. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be like on a man. But the way even you kind of respond is, well, he should have said something. He should have did this. But one thing I do know, I have noticed when it comes to these brothers, when it comes to other groups of women outside our community, is that if they were interested, they have no problem shooting their shot. Matter of fact, I'm going to say white women trick off money quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not to say mm -hmm. you got to trick off money. I don't support that. But they will trick off money with these brothers just yeah. to get their attention. And, no, and, I, and you remember what Kevin was saying about the competition aspect? Yeah, yeah. So no, how I, does that play into it? The, 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 I one hundred, I one hundred percent believe that a woman's supposed to um, shoot her shot, give choosing signal, and all of that. But in the shooting of my shot, like that situation, for example, say she was the one who approached him, and say she was the one who initiated the conversation and carried the conversation for four hours. Now, with her being the one to say, hey, you should take my number, that's when I draw the line because she gave him all the signs, all the indication that I am interested in you. I think you as a man now should pursue her, ask for the number, all those things. I mean, what else could she have done to prove that she's interested in you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, like I say, for me personally, it's just what she said, right? If a woman's holding that long of a conversation with you, I would say she's interested. It's just bottom line. But I come from a different era. We're dealing mm -hmm. with an era of guys today that I don't think they even understand choosing signals, some of them. Some of them. I mean, a lot of them, you know, kind of you listen to how some of them talk. And, uh, you know, I can just tell they was raised with a single mother. And so I mean we have to literally repair some some of that, you know, because like women today are saying these guys t acting like they the prize and they did this and they did that and, and all of that. But I think a lot of that comes from a single mother. I, and I think those men who are quote unquote too scared to ask for the number, they have the the, the women out there who will be the pursuer, who will be the aggressive, you know, mm -hmm. um, ones who will ask for his number and you know take him out and, and do all of those things i think um to each his own if you want to be a kind of guy who a woman is going to come up to you and say hey you should you know let me get your number i'm gonna take you out and you would be content with that then do it i know i'm not i'm not gonna i'll shoot my shot i'll give choosing signals i'll initiate a conversation but that's how far i'm gonna take it i'm not gonna be pursuing or hunting yeah yeah. Okay. Well, well, look, well, well, basically, what you said is what I I totally agree with. I think if a woman's approaching you, if she's you know, or just even initiating con certain conversation, the way a woman looks at you, the way she smiles at you, like I tell guys, if a woman's interested in you, you could take her to the park with a freaking uh, tuna sandwich <laughs> and, and and some apple juice, and she would just love to be there with you if mm -hmm. that's what she wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, you're hundred percent right. <laughs> All right. So, so it, it don't even matter. Like I say, y'all can go jump rope. She'd be happy with jumping rope, but, but dudes have to pay attention to those, those choosing signals. So, so, mm -hmm. but I guess from what I've seen Chantel, some, I guess some guys are traumatized by how mean some women have been, you mm -hmm. know, cause like you, you try, you talk to some of them and they just like, Oh, like well, you ain't dressed right. Yeah. Like, like, and really like just tear down their self esteem. <laughs> Like you, you approach them and they're like, "Ew, yeah." yeah. And I mean, like that's that's. And why do they gotta up. Chantel? Why do they have to be so 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 freaking mean? They can't just say, "No, nah, I'm not interested." Or, yeah. No, I'm you know I'm in a relationship. Why can't it just be that? Why gotta be like I can't believe he came up to me? 
It's like, I mean, I think it's like it gives them a boost of ego. I, I remember Austin um, Holloman, the Passport Bros guy, he yeah. was saying how, you know, sometimes he will get choosing signals and then when he approaches in America, and then when he approaches a girl, she's like, oh, you. And then he's like, am I tripping? Because I know you were staring at me for like the last 30 minutes, right? Right. So it's like, I think what they want is kind of like those girls who post half naked on social media and then complain about the thirsty guys. It's like, this is what you expected. So they just want an opportunity to reject a guy. And I mean, it's it's a fear, it's a fear. Um, I don't know the words to call it why men would would be against approaching. I mean, if this guy in that particular video was, you know, says he got 15 EUs in the last 24 hours, it's understandable why he probably wouldn't ask for her number. But then at the same time, wasn't it Michael Jordan who said you missed every shot you didn't take or something like that? Or something like that? You should take yeah, 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 shot. yeah. It, it, he, you know, it's kind of like I think what he said was, you know, he can deal with trying and failing, but not trying at all. He could not deal with that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like because eventually when you try, you're gonna win. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. And I mean it comes not making any excuses for these EU girls. I mean, it's just it's like, why would you even do that? These men are human too. But you know, a, a man yeah, well using- Chantel, this listen, they just need to stop being so freaking mean. That that's yeah. it. Stop being mean. And then another thing, Chantel. <laughs> If a man like, why don't you smile a little bit? Oh, you weird. Why are you tell me to smile? What's wrong with smiling? Yeah. What is wrong with it? It's like, it's like, claim, like oh, you're weird. <laughs> they claim mean mugging is a way to protect themselves. So like if they're mean mugging, they, that's like, I don't know. As I said, we, we repeat certain talking points without thinking about them logic. Okay. <laughs> yes, you're right. Mean mugging will keep you single. It will keep you single. Definitely. And it definitely, you know, shoot, I, you know me, I go into it. The, the, definitely, they go have to get a cat. That's what they go have to get. A freaking cat. I mean, <laughs> the because fact that's that, all they're going to be relegated to. The fact that a simple smile is like pulling teeth is like, I get it. Dating sucks. Dating sucks for bed. I thank God every day that I'm not a man because it just sucks. But I mean, <laughs> What are we going to do about it? That's so, why, you know, we talk up against it and pray to God and hope that more younger girls are listening and just, you know, reflecting on how they treat people. Yeah, well, you know, I can say I, I've seen your content and I definitely appreciate everything you're doing for the brothers. You know, you, you're educating, you, you know, you're calling these uh, women out. I definitely appreciate that you're doing that and you should be highlighted. You should be supported um, in, in, in your quest uh, doing so. Um and guys, don't be afraid to shoot your shot, you know. It, it, but like I said, I understand you guys are dealing with a different time period because y'all dealing with even the trans women now, some of oh, your brothers. God. That's something we yeah. never had to deal with in my time. Yeah. I mean, you, you've been hearing some of them stories? Yeah. This one story I heard over the weekend, she was living with her boyfriend and her boyfriend's oh, yeah. mom. And then she had the nerves to be like, oh, I'm just a regular girl. And I'm like... Uh, well, how do you feel? How do you feel as a as a natural biological woman that you having these surgically enhanced males coming into your spaces and actually trying to speak for you and encroach on the men that maybe you want to possibly fool with? Like, how do you feel about that as a woman? I mean, it's it's it can be very disrespectful if we're really going to be honest about it because it's like, um, you know. You're just choosing to be a, a woman. No, you know, you're just you're just choosing to, to have um the quote unquote struggles. And we're talking about like um, you know, menstrual pains and you know, hormonal struggles growing up as a teenage girl with, with acne and all those things. Although I know men have it too, but you know, and then you're just choosing now to be to be a woman, and then um the the nerve of them to not share that with whoever they're dating like the video i saw for example she did not see that there was anything wrong with her she dated this guy for over three months and did not feel that it was necessary to tell him that hey i was actually born a man I, that's just that's rough that's just like dating sucks for men i mean it happens with women too because they're they're trans men or trans you know, people who yeah, are born, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think it's it's very more common on um on the the men men side, like more men becoming women. Uh, like, like I said, and then and then 
you know, when you see these stories about something happening to one of them, like I said, there's one or two reasons it's happening. Either they tried to fool them, which that one you're talking about. Look, look, luckily, the mama found out and not the dude found out in the process or something, right? I mean, I just me personally, I like how do you date a woman and not know? Yeah. I mean, but I guess these days I tell guys, go to her bathroom and see if you can find some tampons, some, uh, you know, maxi pads, Midol. You know, I would say ask her when the last time she went to the gynecologist. Who's her last guy? Who is a gynecologist? You know, yeah. you guys will have to do that these days. So like so is it how do they not know though? I don't I don't know because usually these days people have no problems even sleeping on the first date now. I mean when really? I was you know coming up, you know, like I said, I was a teenager in the nineties and stuff like that, or even growing up as a kid in the eighties, right? Yeah, you had females out there, you know, horning up, but it mm-hmm. wasn't the norm. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. wasn't. So you sleep with somebody on the first date, everybody look at you, oh, she a hoe. Yeah. And she would get that label. And nobody want to fool her except to, you know, get their rocks off. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Like you said, how do you not even know, get to that point? Like you, it's nothing that, that threw you off about like the energy, like women, women give off an energy and men get off, give off certain energies. Right. Yeah. And if something is a throat about the energy coming from this so-called female, you need to like, what's up with this? Yeah. And don't be yeah. so quick to kiss nobody either in the mouth. Because I mean, like, even if say, in that particular um, incident, even if they weren't having sex, or you know, like, there was there would still be ways to know, like, she hasn't had her period, you know, she had like certain things. It's like, how do you not know? Especially knowing how um, how common it is these days. Would why are you so just so nonchalant with? Well, well it, it go back to what you said about the the sex thing. How do you go three months and you never did anything? How do you do that? I'm just talking about as in today's world, how do you do that? Unless the surgery is that great. I mean, no, no, the surgery. I mean, I, I don't know if that person got gender reassignment surgery. I don't know. But because, you know, the Sydney star one, that's the one that, that can fool a whole lot of people. But I think yeah. that one had the surgery. Most of them don't get the surgery. So it's like, how do you not like say, cause listen, I'm sorry. I couldn't go no three months without no, mm-hmm. sorry. You know, that just wouldn't be the case. Um, I don't understand that. You know, I'm not saying you go do something, you know, reckless and not protect yourself, but three mm-hmm. months, I mean, you got it. You got to know, even if you compatible with her, even, um, sexually, because yeah. if you're not sexually compatible, it's not going to work either. How are you going to build a whole relationship with somebody? You're not even compatible in that area. Yeah. And you know, that's a fair point too. even going back to the video that you showed, because a lot of these, a lot of these trans women, like they look like women who, you know, wear the typical heavy makeup, the weave, the lashes, all those things. So it's really hard to tell what's a real woman than what's not a real woman. Not saying the lady in the clip look like a trans, but you know, pardon me. It didn't used to be. Yeah, it didn't. Cause you know why? Why is that? Because if you go back to the, I got to go back to that. You go back to the 80s and 90s. You can go look at the videos. Go look at the music videos from the 80s and 90s. Look at those girls. Even the ones that were so-called video vixens. Look mm-hmm. at those girls and how they look. They still had a more natural look to them. Mm-hmm. They did. It like it's like back in the day, you could tell, you know, at that time period, they would call them transvestite or they will call them tranny back in that time period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You would know who they are because they all the eccentric makeup, like you said, you would just know. Natural women would let me give an example. I'm seeing how you present yourself in your makeup. You mm-hmm. look more natural, right? Well, that was the norm. Today, you have women that's getting all this surgery, getting all the lashes, all this freaking makeup. They looking no different than a trans woman. Yeah. So that's one way they're fueling you. It's like how yeah. it's no difference with y'all in, the, in presentation. If you go yeah. back to a natural look, listen, men are asking for the BBLs, uh, Chantel. They're not. And maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I know they're not. Mm-hmm. Men aren't asking for you to wear these lashes that look like you're flying away. They're not asking you for that. Men aren't asking you for all the breast implants. Mm-hmm. They're not asking you for that. They're not. You'd rather get surgery instead of going with Chantel to the gym <laughs> or asking mm-hmm. Chantel how to cook. <laughs> That's what they that's what they rather do. They rather spend thousands of dollars and risk their life, Chantel, than maybe getting some some cooking advice from you, some makeup advice, or whatever. 
So it yeah. makes no difference today with all this freaking surgery. That's how they're fooling you. Mm -hmm. And so I understand why men don't want to be asking for numbers these days because they really don't know if you're a man, if you're a man or and a woman. That's sad. If you look, Could you imagine yeah, that? Well, I mean, I could not imagine you having a conversation, you find out, like, oh, this is a dude. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. my God. It's like something would just go through you at that moment. Like, you you be questioning yourself, like, how did I not know? Yeah, yeah. And, and all of that. Or let's say if the women know and you didn't know, and they're looking at you kind of funny style, and then maybe say one point to the side and say, Hey, you know, that's a that's a you know, trans woman, right? Huh? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm letting you know. And you're like, you just it just ruined your whole day. <laughs> and then especially yeah. once people saw you talking to them, now you embarrassed, and it's like shh. I feel for you brothers out there trying to date. I feel for y'all. Thank God I'm not out there looking for no one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A tip a tip for them, though, they can't ask for her baby pictures. And see. You you can. Like I, like I said, I don't even want a baby picture because they can lie about that. I heard <laughs> in the birth certificates in some, um, with the California, one of them states, they allow them to change their birth certificates. Mm. Think mm. California, which would sound about right, freaking devil California. But I'm like, no, I need your gynecologist. What's her name or what's his name? Uh, uh, I need to see. Well, are you taking my doll or you use it? No, no, no. I need to find out something. Most men don't yeah. want to know that. Then in men, I've always said this too. When you go to their um, uh, medicine cabinet, go look at the medicines that she got in the pills. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of it and research that junk. That mm -hmm. way, you know what it is. It could be STD medication. It could be hormone therapy. Do the research. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> it's sad to be to having the, back in the day. You didn't have to do all that. You didn't have to worry about that. But today it's like. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And it's like, it's so prevalent. It's like, can we not see just how messed up that is? And then as women, um, you know, women who were born, born girls is like, why do we not understand why men are saying, you know, we don't like the wigs. We don't like the heavy makeup because it's hard to tell if you're trans or not. Right. I mean, it would make more logical sense to, to go down on the, the makeup, you know, to stand apart, to make a man can see you and say, oh yeah, that's definitely a woman. Right. Cause the trans people, they need that makeup Yeah. to hide. Right. Natural women, could get out the shower and you still can tell, oh yeah, she's a woman. So yeah. that that's that's just a thing, you know. So yeah, yeah. Chantel, please tell men what they need to do to protect themselves on your channel because they, they need that information. But with that being said, Chantel, tell people, you know, how they can get to your channel and also that fitness channel. Let people know about the fitness channel as well. So my original, my um primary channel is Chantel Simone. And then if you were to go to my primary channel, you'll see a little section that said channels. You'll see my fitness channel is called Authentic Fitness and Workout. And um, I have workout videos on it. I also have nutrition videos on it. So I'm supposed to be doing more soon. I say that every day. <laughs> but it's just it's just difficult to record yourself while you're working out. But I'll, I'll make an effort soon. But yeah, that's where you can find me, Chantel Simone. And my Instagram is underscore chats with Shan. All right, bro brothers, I, I, I want you to go and subscribe to, to Chantel's channel. And any of you ladies need some tips from her, so, you know, subscribe and also go to the fitness channel. You know, that's very, very important, you know, just for the health. It's not just getting a man, but it's also just for health, right? Um, health is well. So, Chantel, thank you for joining us, you know, today on the show. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This is a good conversation.